On a Thursday evening at South Salem High School, three students, all a part of South's DECA program, facilitated a community discussion on the impacts of fentanyl. Their goal is to spread awareness about the growing crisis that is ending the lives of youth everywhere, including Oregon. Their campaign name, Fight Fentanyl with Facts, explains exactly what they are doing. Our ad advisor, Mr. Dixon, actually brought up to us that fentanyl was a big problem that was uh, coming up in our community. We were looking for opportunities to learn more about fentanyl and we saw that there was a community conversation up in Beaverton. We met Jennifer Epstein there. She was a great resource and that's how we got in contact with her. Four individuals whose work directly faces the fentanyl crisis head-on were invited to educate attendees and to answer questions around fentanyl. One of those speakers was Jennifer Epstein. Jennifer is the director of research for the family-run nonprofit Song for Charlie, and she's also Cal's mom. Jennifer shared her son's story and shared what Song for Charlie is doing to combat the fentanyl crisis. My 18-year-old son Cal was a great kid, an average teenager, very well liked, uh, very involved in school, involved in the theater community, a lifeguard just seemed to be doing well. He had anxiety, but we were getting all the professional help that we thought he needed, and he seemed to be doing well. He went off to college, uh, spent a semester off at college, came home after the first semester, his freshman year, and um, we found him unresponsive in his bed. He had reached out on Snapchat to get a um, an Oxy, a choice that was certainly a poor choice, uh, but he, instead of Oxy, he got fentanyl and uh, died as a result. Song for Charlie basically is a nonprofit that was created to raise awareness about fentanyl and fake pills uh, amongst youth and parents. Song for Charlie recently in, in January of 2023, we were awarded a contract by the California Department of Healthcare Services uh, to create a portal for parents to help parents understand what is going on with fentanyl and fake pills and to give them resources to educate their kids. And so in September of 2023, we released a new website called the New Drug Talk, Connect to Protect, and it is a website that is provides information to parents and uh, really anybody who, who's interested about what is going on with the fentanyl epidemic, what is going on with fentanyl and fake pills, and it gives them resources to help conversations with, with young people, with their kids, and also resources to help uh, to understand what to do in case you, you see somebody overdosing or um, see somebody, somebody struggling with drugs. Fentanyl is a high-powered synthetic opioid, 50 to 100 times more powerful than plant-based opioids. Unlike opium, morphine, and codeine, fentanyl is man-made and produced within a lab. When used in a controlled medical setting, fentanyl is an extremely helpful tool. However, most street drugs today contain various amounts of fentanyl, and it doesn't take much to induce an overdose. Just two milligrams is enough to kill uh, an average person. Jennifer also shared a chart from the Song for Charlie website that shows the transition in drug type usage between 2012 and 2022. Fentanyl is stronger, cheaper, and faster to make compared to plant-based opioids. This means it has spread quicker than we had the chance to learn about it. Today's youth grew up in a different uh, culture. They grew up in a time when, when people turn to medications to solve problems. Uh, from the time they are young, you know, they may see a parent taking Advil for a headache, or um, they may have friends who are on Xanax or Adderall for anxiety. If they go to a doctor to get uh, a wisdom tooth pulled, they're given a prescription for Percocet. So kids today are a lot more comfortable with medications than previous generations, and, and they trust them. Uh, they, they know that if they're given a, a 
a prescription from a doctor that it's going to have a, a specified dose and, and that's the right dose for them. And so uh, young people don't always understand that a pill that they get from uh, social media or a pill that they that might be passed to them by a friend in a hallway um, at a party, they don't understand that that, that pill is uh, most likely is not a legitimate prescription pill and that it could in fact be laced with fentanyl and and uh, end their life or cause problems down the road. We're mostly like targeting like students um, but also parents and just people in the community. We just want everyone to know. We felt that it was quite important that if it's in the news and it's about Someone, someone is dying and our teachers don't know about it, it's something that we should know. Um, and so we wanted to start educating our community. Sergeant Brian Goldman was another speaker who presented during the community discussion with the goal of sharing his knowledge on the fentanyl crisis from the perspective of someone in law enforcement. Sergeant Goldman works in the drug enforcement section with the Oregon State Police, and he says it's not always easy to spot fentanyl. So spotting fentanyl in its pill form is very easy to do. Um, any pill that's blue and it says M on one side, 30 on the other is, is more likely than not, it's, it's almost always going to be a, a fentanyl pill. Um, pretty much any pill that you buy on the street um, that somebody is selling uh, for the purpose of getting high is, is most likely going to be a fentanyl pill. Uh, it gets trickier when it gets into the powdered form. Fentanyl is a white powder, much like um, cocaine, meth, or, or a white China heroin. Um, so it can be a little bit trickier then to distinguish what um, fentanyl is um, versus what some of the other illicit drugs are. Um, and we're seeing a lot of cross-contamination too with fentanyl being mixed with other drugs. So, but I think a safe thing to assume is, is any time that you're uh, encountering an illicit substance, especially if it's a white powder, it more likely than not has fentanyl in it. Sergeant Goldman also shared that he's definitely noticed a difference in drug trends within Oregon and explains how that changes the way in which he carries out his daily duties. Early in my career, uh, meth was the predominant drug that we encountered on the street. Um, over the last four years, um, I've seen opioids really start to dominate the market in Oregon. And over the last two, uh, we've really switched from being a heroin state to uh, a fentanyl state. Um, so we're, we're seeing that trend continue uh, and it's really reflecting in the overdoses that we see on the street too. We have really recognize how many overdose deaths we're seeing across the state um, as, as a state agency uh, and we're adjusting our strategies um, to focus on fentanyl as opposed to other things with an effort to prioritize life safety um, so we can work to reduce those overdose deaths. In May of 2023, Oregon Senate Bill 238 was passed, which requires schools to create a curriculum that teaches students opioid education by fall of 2024. Salem-Kaiser School District, however, has already been implementing new policies to ensure the safety of their students. One of them being that they now keep naloxone, mainly known as Narcan, available for use in case of emergency. Salem-Kaiser Public Schools nurse coordinator Jody Peterson and Salem-Kaiser Public Schools registered nurse Denise Proudfoot both explained what Narcan is, how to use it, and what schools are doing to make sure the students who need it get it safely. Narcan is a nasal spray that's easily administered um, and it's meant to be administered to um, individuals who are showing signs of a possible opioid overdose or if in, uh, fentanyl being the concern um, that is most prevalent in our, in our community with the 18 to 24 year old um, kids. And it's readily available and it can be immediately effective. And sometimes it takes multiple doses to take effect, but to counteract an uh, opioid overdose, that is the medication that um, is able to be in the hands of, of any community member before emergency medical services can be, be available. This is a sample dose and it is very simple. It goes in one nostril and with the bottom red um, plunger, you just put it in the nostril and spray and that is how simple it is to give. Thankfully, we have not had to administer Narcan within the school day to a Salem-Kaiser Public School student since we've had Narcan available in the schools. But what we have been able to do is train a number of staff members 
to administer Narcan if we needed to, so that we're prepared. And we've had Narcan um, provided to each school, at least one vial. Um, nurses carry them, security team members carry Narcan as well, so that we're prepared um, if there's an unfortunate time that we would need to use it. In March of 2023, the FDA approved over-the-counter Narcan nasal spray, a big step in the aid of overdose response. The package comes with two spray cartridges because the effects of Narcan can wear off quickly, which means that the second dose may also need to be administered before help arrives. That's why it's important to call for help before using Narcan. Another tool that is used to combat fentanyl are test strips. But test strips don't guarantee true results. You could test a portion of a pill and it could come out negative, but the rest of the pill could have enough to kill five people. Jennifer also explained why it seems that youth today are so comfortable with taking pills of any kind. I think the community needs to understand that the drug landscape is not the same as it was when um, most adults were growing up or even the same as five years ago and it is much more dangerous than ever before. A person experimenting with a pill or a powder uh, could, could lose their life the first time they, they try a drug. It is very easy for uh, young people to get a hold of a fentanyl pill, sometimes unknowingly. Uh, I know of a mom who, in California who lost her 13-year-old, and he certainly wasn't looking for fentanyl. He uh, had had a root canal and was having lingering pain from that root canal. He uh, was online uh, playing video games with some friends, and he complained about his his tooth. And, and one of his friends that he was playing video games with offered him a Percocet. Uh, Lucas said yes, he was interested in um, and trying it, and so his friend dropped off the, the Percocet at his front door. Uh, Luca went downstairs, got that pill, lay down, took the pill, and, and died. And so, you know, I think kids are trusting. They, uh, they don't always know what the dangers are, and it's easy for them to make a mistake. Here's what Sergeant Goldman had to say about what Oregon State Police are doing in efforts to stop the distribution of fentanyl within Oregon. Reallocation of resources um, with troopers, at least from our agency, who are, are focusing in on fentanyl specifically um, and, and getting as much of it as we can off the street. Uh, and also doing events like this where we um, go out and engage the community and, and help educate um, community members about uh, the dangers of fentanyl uh, and how to um, spot it and avoid it. This event proved to be a vital learning experience for those who were present. Both adults and students were in attendance they asked questions, shared their thoughts, and in the end, everyone agreed that this was a conversation that needs to continue within communities. One of my goals was to have people show up and ask questions about, like, to our panel members, to have that participation element that really, like, connects the speakers to the audience and the community. Even if only two people showed up and that was our mom and dad um, or our sister or our best friend, we still helped someone and we still gave out the knowledge that we have to help anyone. For more information about the fight against fentanyl, visit www.songforcharlie.org to gain free access to educational resources created for adults and youth. Or call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration National Helpline at 1-800-662-4357. This is Capital Community Media. Thanks for watching.